to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and this is a podcast mainly about knitting. Today I have also some sewing and a bit of crochet so there will sometimes also be other things. And yes, um, I'm coming to you from the southern part in Denmark on an island called Fyn where I live with my partner and our two children. And it has been a little while again. I feel like I say this in every episode, but it is just um, I haven't managed to knit that much, so I th- didn't feel like podcast. I felt like podcasting, but I didn't have much to talk about. And I don't want to do a podcast about just chatting. I guess as long as I'm doing knitting podcasts, I want them to be about knitting. I uh, yeah, I guess there will be a bit. I will talk a bit about what I've been up to and what we've been doing. A lot of gardening and some other things so in case you're not interested in that just skip ahead a little bit and i will try to put uh, on the screen when you can skip to or in the description because um, yeah i just want to begin off by what i've been doing uh, since last time we spoke uh, as we all know it has been a little bit crazy for most of us um, i guess everywhere in the world right now here things luckily are starting to look a lot better which also means that my kids are back to daycare and kindergarten uh, which is a little bit nerve-wracking um, but also really nice because it means I can work again um, while they were home I was trying to work and have them home at the same time and it's just wasn't that easy and my partner has been really busy he's um, actually working with uh, he's a scientist and he works with antibodies for the coronavirus so it's really exciting but it also means he's really busy uh, and I just yeah I his job is at this point more important I feel it's a way to do something about the situation and even though I love my job uh, I just put it aside for a little bit so I'm really excited to get started again um, and getting back to somewhat normal. It just feels a bit strange when you look around the world and things are still so crazy. And here actually things have been really calm so far, but I'm afraid if people don't keep up uh, what we've been doing until now, it might get worse also here. So we will see it's a little bit of a different time, but we live pretty isolated and uh, we can spend, we spend most of our days in the garden or going to the forest, Um, been doing a lot of walks. I take the kids out for a bike ride every day with our um, cargo bike. So it's electric cargo bike. So it's really easy to take them around. around. I just have to remember to charge it, which I sometimes forget. Um, Yeah, and we have been getting the garden ready, which is super exciting. I have been so excited for gardening this year. I'll try to include some little clips it, I, we put up raised beds, uh, which I haven't had before, um, and getting dirt was all of a sudden like a big problem because we don't really have anywhere we can just take a lot of dirt out. We put up six raised beds, so we need a lot of dirt for that. And uh, yeah, so we normally we would go to the recycling station where they have free dirt because it would be really expensive to buy it in bags. Um, so we'd go, but that has been closed and. When it opened up, there were so many people going and it was absolutely crazy. We tried going there and there was a line of cars like crazy. Anyways, we talked to the neighbor and it turned out that they had, um, uh, he had some, because uh, we live next to the forest, they work in the forest, they had some compost of leaves and branches and stuff. So we got a lot of compost, which was really great. So we managed to plant potatoes and I, I have been sowing carrots and strawberries and all kind of things. Um, I am planning to make a little vlog uh, like I've done for January and February. Uh, I'm, I've been recording little bits, but just I, I couldn't really record as much as I wanted. So I'm still planning to make a vlog for March and April, like a combined one maybe, uh, and show a bit more of the garden. And yeah, I just... That took some time to plan and get everything ready because once you put down the beds, they're kind of there. 
and then we have been and the weather has been amazing after it stopped raining which is but it has been doing all winter it's been really cold and really clear and blue sky and sunshine and i just i can take the cold as long as it's it's nice weather so uh yeah i we have been in the garden a lot with the kids and we have a little uh, sand box for them so they can sit in the little guy really likes uh, Maune, my boy he likes to sit in the sandbox and um, there's a swing and stuff for them to do in the garden and we've been trying also to build a chicken coop because when we came here uh, we are renting this house the the previous uh, tenants renters they uh, left a chicken house like a little house for the chickens and so we have been talking about should we get chickens but we haven't done anything about it because there were a lot of other things uh, with small babies and so on but uh, yeah we finally put up the chicken coop and the chickens arrived yesterday and it has been so exciting to get the chickens um we got four they're like they're almost adults so they're like young ones and they're still not laying eggs but they will in a few weeks i think um and we got four yesterday and the chicken coop is still not completely finished because we ran out of stables. <laughs> so, uh, and since they're young and a bit nervous and they don't really know where to go and what to do, uh, one of them actually flew out because, as I said, we didn't staple all the bits into place, um, especially on the roof, like there's a net, net roof. So we had a chicken running in the garden and since we live next to the forest, we cannot have them out now. There will be fox, foxes coming by in the night so yeah uh, but we managed to get it back in and uh, now they're just trying to settle in it's really funny because as i grew up on a farm i'm used to chickens and i'm used to um i'm used to the i've, I've, I've had ch chickens like a flock of chickens all my life or my parents had and you know in the evening you would just open the door call a call for them show them some food or like make the food rattle i don't know how to say that and they would all come running there would also be some always be some older hens that knew where to go or the rooster and they just knew where home was but we got four young ones and they don't know where home is and they are not it's a very different experience than what i i, I was really like ah, i know how to what to do with chickens that's easy but it, it it's not that it wasn't easy but it's just uh, yeah it just felt like a different experience so we have to get to know the chickens find names for them uh, I still don't want to give them names because I have to get we have to get to know the ladies um, so that was been fun and our little boy is just standing there and talking to them all the time super excited and they're a little nervous about the, the kids when they're too loud so but I'm sure that give them a bit of time and they will get used to the place so the plan is to keep them in there for some time and then once they're ready they are used to life here and know where their home is and so on we can let them out into the garden and roam a little more freely um, when i'm sure that they will come home at night because staying out at night here would just be not a good idea uh, let me just say see what else i yeah so it's been it's been really nice in some ways to be home. We haven't been in quarantine, so we could go out, we could go to the sea, but everything has been closed. Um, and it's been nice being with the kids, seeing them play together, interact, uh, but it's been impossible to work. I mean, not impossible, but it's been, I feel like any moment I had to do something like in the evenings or at other times, I would spend them working and that is, I actually have been now that they started on Monday I it took me a few days just to get back into things because I really felt like taking some time off but of course I have a million things to do and emails to answer and by the way if you have written me anything and I haven't answered I'm sorry I'm just a little behind on everything um, so feel free to send me just a little note like hey remember my email <laughs> in case you haven't heard anything because I might just they get especially if you write me on instagram or something they just disappear generally i would always say write to my email address it's down below because it's not working if uh, instagram is really bad for that it's good for little conversations and comments to pick if i post a story and somebody wants to say that everything looks nice or just write me like really casually but if you want to contact me for anything that 
more important, then I would say don't contact me on Instagram. Uh, and by the way, I am Fiber Tales everywhere. So if you look for me on Ravelry, if you look for me on Instagram um, and here on YouTube, all the links are below, but I'm always Fiber Tales, so you can search for that. Um, yes. Uh, what else, what else, what else? I've been working on submissions. I said that, so I have been doing some... Did I say that? I didn't say that. I recorded the intro a few times. <laughs> it always happens. Uh, yes, I've been working mainly on submissions. Um, there have been quite a few calls for submissions that were really exciting. So I've been working on that and who knows, maybe I'm lucky to get something uh, that gets picked. Um, so I haven't done much knitting, but actually when I gathered my things, I realized that I had I have done some things, but it's just not been anything new or really exciting. I finished something that I will show you behind. That, uh, that is behind me, I will show you later. And I also um, have something exciting to show you, really exciting, that is something I've been teasing with for quite some time and now it's really close to being released, so I think it's time to reveal uh, the design, but I will show you that a bit later. Uh, and today I am drinking coffee, because I haven't really been drinking a lot of coffee lately, I just feel like I need coffee to, to stay awake for the whole day and the other thing is when you for example when I take care of the kids they're at different ages so one is one and a half and the other one is four and a half it it's quite it feels like I've been working all day I mean it's not like taking care of my own kids is work but it's there's a lot to do feed them change them go do things with them and then in the evening when you try to work or like when they have a nap I try to work, the little one has an app, I've been trying to work, so it's just, I feel like I need coffee more than ever. And normally I'm a one coffee a day kind of person, um, because I just get a little too, uh, like I feel a little jittery if I have too much caffeine. The f I don't feel anything if it's one cup, but I feel, I feel it with more than one cup, but lately I'm not feeling anything. <laughs> so, yep, I'm drinking coffee. Which you rarely see me do because, as I said, I normally really cherish my one cup of coffee in the morning. It is my very important quiet moment normally. Um, I, it's not always quiet. But I try to make it like a special moment, but lately I've been having one in the afternoon as well. Normally I don't do more than one and a half also because I use sugar and milk and it, it's not that healthy to have a lot of coffee. Uh, both for the sugar and for the caffeine. So, I hope that all of you out there are, have been okay in these times. I, I'm really aware that we are not in the worst of situations, even in the days where I've been really tired of not being able to do my job and not being able to... It's really funny because I'm an, I think I'm an introvert. Uh, I love being social, but I always need that downtime very much. <laughs> Um, and I feel very good being at home and being with kids all the time that are very loud, very noisy and even if they're my kids and I love them uh, it just it's really hard to get that downtime um, so it I I don't know if that's you can if it has anything to do with being an introvert but I, I feel like being around people all the time is is hard for me and then being around my kids all the time is also a little bit hard for me. I really feel very good when I have a f some hours a day for working that feels like me time. And now that I'm doing fiber tales all the time, most of the work is fun. There's some tax stuff that is not that fun and I have to get back to very soon. But I thought it would be nice to do something fun, like a podcast today, trying to get back into things. And I feel like I miss talking to you guys. I miss uh, posting more on Instagram. I just generally been all those fun things I've been not, I haven't been doing. So, okay, let's get into the knitting. So for anyone who has been, who's more here for knitting, uh, I have some fun things to show you. So let me start with the t-shirt behind me. Oops, let's see if I, I'm sitting on a small stool, so it's a little bit awkward. Oh, and by the way, can I just show you just one more thing for the knitting? Look at these. See if I can focus. Look at these sweet, sweet. Excuse me. <laughs> these are forget me nuts. Um, and actually, 
We have made a little tradition. I feel like it's a tradition. The woman who takes care of my son, um, she has a small private daycare. There are, I think, maximum five kids um, in her care. And she came by with a flower and a little note and said Happy Easter and some Easter eggs and so on because she missed him uh, while uh, everything was closed down. And I thought it was such a sweet little thing. I'm not uh, religious, I think I've said that before, so I don't... Easter is not something we celebrate much. Uh, we celebrate Christmas, but that's a little bit for different reasons. It's more like a cultural thing. But Easter has no real meaning in Denmark. Um, but, or at least for me, uh, I know for some other people it's more important. Um, but uh, yeah, she came by with some flowers, that's what I wanted to say. And I thought it was so such a sweet idea that I bought some flowers with my girl, um, my boy. We, we drove down with the bike to, we have a little, um, how do you say that? Where you raise flowers, raise, grow flowers. Anyways, we bought some flowers and I, we have been making little notes and passing them to the neighbors that we have contact with. Um, and there's this old, old elderly couple uh, living in the forest and the woman, uh, woman actually knits and I have to get together with her sometime and knit. Uh, that would be really lovely once this, this situation is uh, over. But we left a flower in front of her door and the other day she came and she left this these sweet little forget-me-nuts that I think are from her own garden and then she also left us some another flower and I just really love that this way that we are actually interacting almost more with the neighbors now that we are not supposed to so we talk to them with some distance um, but it's just been really lovely to we know all we all need something nice in the day-to-day -day life so if you can do a little if you can leave a little uh, note for your neighbors or just something nice like a flower uh, it just means so much these days and i just left it for easter because that was like an excuse to do it um and yeah we also had a lot of fun looking for chocolate eggs um in the garden for easter that's i think that's the only thing we did to celebrate this year so but enough about that i um i wanted to talk about knitting and if you jumped in you're probably like she didn't talk about knitting uh, this is uh, my finished object i think last time i hadn't finished i was at the neck i think uh, but it's all done now i made the sleeves so the sleeves are a little bit longer this is a design that is currently being tested it's my design and uh, it is um, just a simple t so there are two versions of the design I don't have the other one here, but I've shown it so many times. The other one has a, f a button placket down the center and is more cropped, so quite cropped and has shorter sleeves. And I decided it would be nice to make like um, a more uh, like a classic t-shirt version. So this one is like a classic t-shirt um, and I knit it in Knitting for Olive uh, cotton merino. So it's a blend between cotton and merino <laughs> and I just it turned out I love it so much it has a like a big scoop neck but not too low um, I have pictures on Instagram and I my testers are starting to finish starting to yeah they're almost done uh, knitting so I think I will be able to have this one out in a week or two I just have to take some pictures and yeah clean up the pattern and have it uh, set it up nicely and everything so but I finished this one and I'm really happy with it and I am sure it's gonna be so perfect now that the weather is getting a bit warmer uh, and uh, yeah I will tell much more about the details so the yarn and all my thoughts I talked a bit about it last episode I think um, so and it got a name I named it the bellies tea so bellies is a small flower uh, that you find in the grass. It's sometimes also called, at least in Danish, it's called tusenfull also, or like a, like you call it daisy, I think in English, like a small common daisy, something like that. Um, it is just a small flower that sometimes, it, normally it's white and sometimes it's a little bit pink um, and it's so sweet in the grass and you can make little flower crowns. My daughter was wearing a flower crown the other day that they made in kindergarten and it was just very sweet. And I thought since the t-shirt is very simple and sweet, I thought it was a perfect name 
and the, or the first sample that I did, the version one, is white, so it just came to me that it could be a really nice name. So that is the Bellis Tea, and it will be out soon, uh, at least before the end of April. That's the plan. Let's see how things happen, because there's one thing with this new kids have gone back to daycare. If they have any signs of a runny nose or anything, they have to come home. And if you have kids in daycare or kindergarten, you know that they get a runny nose after two seconds. Um, so I'm kind of expecting them to come home soon again. Um, but since they are doing a lot, a lot to wash hands and stuff, I think maybe, maybe it will take a bit longer to get a runny nose. Let's see. Mm. So that was my first finished object. And now to the next one. I didn't finish it now, so I don't feel like it's totally fair to call it a finished object. But it is a design that I'm also testing currently. And I've been teasing a little bit, showing you little bits here and there. But I actually thought I really wanted to share it now because it's coming out. It's going to come out soon. Uh, I haven't taken proper pictures of it yet. So I have to take pictures of both of these patterns. Um, but it is a colorwork shawl and let me just show you i think i have to get back a little bit so you can see it in all its glory without knocking down my coffee or anything Ta -da! can you see it can you see it? i'm so excited <laughs> i've been dying to show the shawl for the longest time okay so it's a really long triangle, triangular shaped shawl and it actually, if I wear it, you can see it's up, it hits me, it goes down until here. So it's not that crazy long, but it's quite a long shawl. And I've been dreaming to make this shawl for the longest time. And I had this idea, I have so many sketches of colorwork shawls and it just I couldn't figure out a way to make them that is fun because everyone knows that knitting color work is not fun flat. I mean, for most people, it's not. I think if you're doing Portuguese knitting, it might be, but still, I don't enjoy knitting color work flat. And so I was thinking for so long how to come up with a method to knit. And I like I know you can knit color work shawls. Um, I've seen color work shawls that I knit like big triangles but they don't have this crescent or this um they don't do the they don't start here and work out they kind of work it as a triangle just a flat one oh, sorry i have fluff in my nose um and i really wanted like a shawl just as i would normally knit it with a with a tap and like a gutter tap and then just increase um, and get this nice triang triangular shape uh, and i did the little sketches of this for the longest time as I said and I finally came up with the way to do it um, I'm not gonna say exactly how I did it probably most of you can guess how it's done uh, I want to when I release it I want to explain all the details but just for now um, maybe you can guess put a comment down below how you think I came I figured out how to do this um, but yeah I just love 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 it it has a few, and by the way, I love the the edge because it has this garter edge uh, and it just looks very nice, I think. Um, I was a little impatient when I finally started. I, I think it's been, I got the yarn, it's a long story about this <laughs> shawl. I got the yarn, um, I don't know, two years ago, is that true? When I started podcasting. Um, Sweet Paul from uh, Ursula Yanko. She sent me the yarn uh, to do a little collab, or she said I could play with it. Um, and it's just been lying there. And I had the idea, I wanted to use it for a color work shawl. I knew this, and it just was so intimidating to get the color work just as I wanted, like to find the right motifs and patterns. Um, and I finally managed. I, it was it was really hard for me. So hard in the sense that I just 
had to start. So when I started, I didn't really write down things and plan things out. I just started knitting like a, I was doodling and I just came up with the, um, I had a over, an overall idea, but I came up with most the uh, motifs as I was knitting uh, and also how they're placed on the shawl, uh, which I wouldn't recommend anyone doing because the center stitches are a little bit, uh, there are some places, for example, how these meet. I don't think it looks that nice. So I changed it a little bit for the pattern and my testers are working on it now and it turned out so much nicer, which of course is a little annoying when I have to take pictures of the, um, of the sample of the finished object for my pattern because I would like it to be correct as the pattern is, but I don't have time right now to knit another sample. So I hope everyone will be okay with that. Um, yeah i just i uh it has been like a doodle a big doodle and when you get to the long rows especially down at the end you just uh, it gets really annoying ripping back i don't know i think i knit like what is like three scarves as i did this the, let's say the stupid way not planning out for this amount of stitches i can have this many repeats i just kind of plucked them in and hope they made in a nice way so I've been doing some uh, I've been changing the pattern up a little bit um, so it fits but all the motifs are the same all the placement is the same it's just that they meet a little bit nicer in the center so yeah it's a play with bubbles so there are these tiny let me see if it will focus on the bubbles there are some tiny bubbles and color work and there's some garter stitch um, and other than that it's just color work and I think this one might also be ready for the end of April or the beginning of May, which of course might be a little bit, it's a big woolly scarf, but you can knit it in any, it's fingering weight. You can knit it in something a little bit lighter and it would still work, I think. So um, I, I think it would be a fun summer knit and it's really engaging with all the color work motifs changing. I thought it was, a, I, for me, it was a lot of fun, except from, the pressure I put on myself to get exactly the right, um, the, the, get the, how do you say, get the motifs the way I wanted them. So, mm. yes, and I can finally show you, and it doesn't have a name. Uh, I was a little bit playing with the idea that, um, because I saw that the sheep that this yarn came from, it's a Canadian yarn and it's a non superwash yarn. Uh, it has some nylon because it's a sock yarn, but it's non superwash and very rustic. Uh, it's a single ply yarn. Yeah, let me see if it will show a little bit. Um, and it's beautifully dyed by Paul, as I said. But um, when I saw where the sheep came from, they're called. Oh god, I will put the name. That's the problem. I found this name and I thought, oh, that would be a beautiful name for the shawl. But first of all, I don't know if it's. A, I think it's an indigenous name. And I don't know if that would be okay to use. Uh, I don't want to offend anybody or, or take something that's not mine. That's what I'm trying to say. And also, I don't know how to pronounce it completely. So that would be kind of awkward. Uh, I mean, I have had names before that I don't know exactly how to pronounce. I have used names that were not my... Uh, like, I didn't know exactly how to pronounce. But I still think it's a bit uh, strange. Yeah, too. So... I have to come up with the, the perfect name for the shawl. If you have any ideas, you can also let me know below. So today I'm giving you a little bit of a things to comment on. So please comment if you think it's fun, how you think I constructed this shawl, because it was, I don't know, it just, my mind is, I'm not good with thinking, getting shapes uh, worked out so well. And um, also, like, I mean, I see some designers that are just geniuses with shapes and creating shapes from different things and i don't know if exactly if that's my strongest point i actually really like this shape of shawl for me it's what i like the best so i'm i prefer just a simple triangular shape shawl but of course i will i might still do other shapes i actually have a fun more fun shaped shawl in mind that might come someday oh well so um yeah this is my finished object and actually oh, let me put my braid behind me it has such a nice fit to sit on the shoulder so i've actually and i never wear shawls like this normally shawls for me are like scarves i wear them like scarves 
but I've been wearing this one like this when I'm working. It just stays put. It's so amazing. It just stays put and I've been loving wearing it with the... Um, yeah, and I'm working and it's a bit chilly. Uh, it's been quite cold, as I said. Sunny, but cold. What else? So, I've been... I've been also doing some crochet lately. I made a bunch of these... Uh, not granny squares, uh, puff stitch squares, I think they're called. Um, and they are just a lot of fun to make. There's a free tutorial on Tipsy Tessie on Instagram. She has a free tutorial like in her stories. So you can go, there's both the written and then there are some uh, little videos showing how to do the puff stitch. I am knitting this with a really thick um, cotton yarn that I got from Ganusel. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I've put it down below. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, it's very thick. And of course, I ran out of yarn. Um, so I'm trying to decide if I should just. This is enough for a smaller pillow, but I wanted to use it for a bigger pillow. And now I'm not sure if I should get more and just make the big pillow or. I should just uh, buy a smaller pillow because I need pillow. I need pillows. We all need pillows in our life, but yeah. So I have made a lot of them already, and I just yeah, they are a lot of fun to do. I did uh, in her tutorial. She's showing you how to do six wraps around for each puff, and I did four because the yarn, as you can see, it's very thick, and I thought they looked already quite big with four so I don't think it's necessary to do six but that's a, I guess a, a matter of how you want them to look so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine nine puffs so that's enough to make a three by like three by three square yes you know what I mean <laughs> the only thing is I don't know if I should have if I want it to be covered in yarn on the back if i sew it onto a fabric i think it will not look so nice so i'm a little confused if i should get more and just do a simple um double crochet on the back let me know if you crochet how do you finish pillows off in the back because it's kind of back you don't see the back so much or maybe you just do the same on the back i don't know let me know what, how would you finish off a pillow with um, a crochet pillow so i've been working on that and they're really nice to do when I've been just have a little moment in the evening after working and I just wanted to sit down and do something before going to bed because I like finishing off my day with a bit of knitting and yeah, just having the other project I've been working on when I needed some knitting has been, let me just take off the shawl again, has been this getting bigger. It's getting quite big actually. My blanket. Yup. I love it so much. Uh, it's a design as well. Um, I showed it before. I did this row of like fringe. It has bubbles. It has some shaping that is actually a little bit similar to the shawl um, that it's using um, because it's using the uh, garter stitch shaping here. So. And I am just doing a lot of gutter stitch, so that's also why I'm not always knitting on this one because it gets it not boring, but it's just yeah, you you I want to use it for when I'm really tired. I just think I have to get more yarn. And this yarn I also got from Ganusel. This is an organic merino wool not not rowing, it's um organic merino single ply, that's what I wanted to say. Um and let me see where I have the ball. I have this much left and then I have two more skeins. But two more skeins and I only knit this much. And if you see how broad it is, you can probably imagine. I don't know if you can see how broad it is because it's huge. You can probably imagine that I will need a lot more. So I'm uh, I'm thinking how much I should get if I should just... Maybe I should just keep going with what I have and then see how much I used until the half po halfway point and then order the same amount think that would be the easiest way but I'm also afraid what if they run they don't have this anymore they had this on some kind of discount because it was for um, they said you could use it for dyeing on uh, and it has some it's a white white merino with a little bit of gray so that's the thing I'm afraid I will run out of yarn if I oh 
they, they won't have the this particular yarn anymore and or at least not on sale and it gets really expensive with a blanket if you if you can get it on sale that's nice i think um yes what else what else what else i yeah I, that's it for knitting <laughs> i've been knitting on a few things actually no that's not it for knitting where are they I put the bag. Moment. I've been also been knitting when we're driving somewhere on my Christmas socks. <laughs> so they are still alive. Um, just looking a bit scrunched up. These are the Christmas sock in the Mary, Mary and Bride colorway that I got from uh, Woolen Twine. Um, and I got it it arrived after christmas there's a story you can go back and watch it in my older videos but uh yeah it's a like a sport weight sock dk weight sock almost and i'm knitting on three millimeter needles and i just want some cozy socks and with the speed i am on i can have these ready for christmas next year or this year but christmas so i've been also working on these and i've been working on the oslo hat for my partner and i've been working like really few rounds and it's not interesting to look at so i'm not gonna show you and i've also been what else oh, i think that's it at least for the things i can show you so um i will show you what i'm wearing because that's the next thing and the next thing is sewing so i have done knitting and now we're on to sewing and i'm wearing i will show you my whole outfit actually because i'm also wearing this one this t-shirt which uh, says Nida and I got it from um, oh no don't don't stop brain I got it from uh, Vitre Vitre design um, from Ida uh, she lives in Norway and she asked me before Christmas if she could send me a little Christmas present so mm, I haven't shown it before uh, it's a beautiful beautifully soft um, sustainable Oh, I have the card somewhere. Anyway, it's a sustainable. It's made of bamboo, I think. Sorry, I will put put it on the screen if it's not correct. But she sent it to me as just as a Christmas present to see if I liked it. And I haven't really been wearing it much because it's uh, it's been cold and I've been wearing long sleeve t-shirts and sweaters most of the winter. But now that it's finally warmer, I can wear this. So that was my design. And I have to get up. That's why I'm so I can show you the rest. Um, so yeah, I'm wearing that together with my new pants that I s have been sewing on for um, some days, <laughs> last week actually. And these are the Papao pants that uh, it's a pattern from Ready to Sew. And let me just show you a little bit and I will talk more about the, the pants. So they're wrap, wrap style pants. If I move the chair, I can go back. And maybe you can see some more so they are quite um, baggy on the front and they have this uh, wrap that you wrap around on the back they have a little loop where you can you loop the, the wraps through and they have a pocket um, so and I'm actually really happy with the bum <laughs> because I was afraid they would look uh, quite it the bum would look quite baggy too but I find it has a nice bum and uh, i think they're really flattering um they have uh i made some modifications but they're a little bit tapered uh, to the legs so let me show you i have the the instructions for the pattern here so as i said this is a new pattern from let me see if i can show you the little line drawing here there you go and you can make them with and without the pocket oh did i show you the pocket it has a pocket here like a deep pocket and then on the back so you can make them with or without the pocket um and they are from whoop, ready to sew which i think it's a french sewing indie indie sewing the designers yeah pattern makers and so i just wanted to talk a bit about the pattern and the changes i made um to the pattern uh Oh, and the, the fabric is from Meter Meter, which is a Danish fabric shop. And it's called, uh, this particular pattern, uh, 
pattern. Fabric is called Mason Cotton Twill in the colorway Dark Rose. And it's a really lovely fabric. Let me see if I can show you a little bit closer the fabric because it is, uh, yeah, it's like a little bit of a loose weave and it is a classic twill that is going in one direction and it, it's just a beautiful color. Uh, it's very soft and very nice to wear. So it feels like wearing very nice pants for home, like jogging home pants style pyjama. So it's really, I really love them. Um, it's been a really fun pattern to do. I haven't been sewing much recently, but since uh, I managed to do a little bit more so, uh, since the kids are away, but also I started doing this before they left, uh, just in the evenings and so on. Days are longer, so there's more lights in the evening. Um, I, it's been a long time since I bought a pattern and made it. Um, so I just really wanted these pants when I saw them. I saw them on the YouTube channel called The Fold, the Fold Line. And they, are, they have a pattern shop where they sell um, patterns. And I, they talk about the new patterns each month. And they mention these pants and I was like, I need to make those. They just look so nice. They remind me very much of... Um, how I used to dress when I was younger. I used to dress with this uh, kind of baggy pants that had drop crotch, like very, I don't know if you call them harem style or something. I really loved those when I was younger. And I just, I saw them and they're like a little bit more dressy. And I'm not saying I'm more dressy, but they, um, they look a little, yeah. I just feel like they meet very well with my current style and my previous style. Like things I still like from my previous style, previous style, but you know, you, your style change and evolves and so on. So when I was younger, maybe 10 years ago, ago, when I was in my twenties, early twenties. Uh, so yeah, I, um, I was just it was a lot of fun to make. So a few things, I don't do what I did. Um, I, I drew the pattern with chalk. First of all, I bought two meters instead of two meters and 20, I think I was supposed to buy just because buying nice fabrics is really expensive and i always feel like i have so much cut thing i cut so much fabric off that i don't use for anything so i thought maybe i can squeeze it in let's see if i can squeeze it in at two meters i don't know if that's called being cheap I, I i wrote it on instagram that i was it's being cheap and someone wrote me no no that's called being uh sustain like doing it sustainably not not wasting any fabric so let's go with that um i think it's actually both i don't like wasting and I, I like to keep costs at a minimum when I make something. So I also often buy too little yarn because I have some idea that I can make, unless I have something in mind, but when I just buy yarn and I'm like, oh, that's a sweater quantity and I always have a little bit too little. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got the fabric, I washed it and I laid it out. And by the way, this fabric, if you get the same fabric, it's very nice, but it frays like crazy. So I'm so happy I have a, searcher that I actually don't always use when I'm sewing because getting that out and getting yeah so but I use the searcher uh, and I'm really happy I used the searcher because this fabric is fraying like you just look at it and it's fraying a lot because it's so loosely spun it just uh, it's not spun woven that the yeah it frays easier um what was I saying I was talking about the fabric and yeah, the pen. So I laid it out. I draw, got all the pieces in there. If you followed my Instagram stories, you will have you will have seen that. But the problem was that I got all the pieces in there, and I had drawn everything when I realized that that was the back of the fabric, which is not a problem. Actually, I liked it that way because that way I don't have all the chalk lines on the front. I have them all on the back where you normally are sewing anyway but uh, it means I mirrored all the pattern pattern pieces. Uh, and when I was following the instructions, I ca I, it, until one point there was no problem, but then I realized I sewed the wrong s the, a bit onto the wrong side. So I had to rip all that out. And then uh, I had to really be careful because this pattern, when you put on the straps and since it's all going to be wrapped in the end, it's hard to like understand it seems like both straps are going in the same directions and in my mind they should be crossing but they will be crossing once you flap them over so you have this piece and it goes like that anyways 
So I just had to really pay attention to the pattern. And then everything was fine. I mean, the pattern is very clear. If you don't mirror things like I did, it's even easier, I'm sure. And you could actually skip the pocket in the front. That would make it because they have those two versions. And if you're a little nervous about it, do the one without the pocket, because that's actually the most tricky part to get everything in there. I think I will make them again, maybe in a black or in a more muted colorway. I mean, this one is nice and muted, but it's a little more, I cannot wear, I can't wear it with everything. Um, so I think maybe a black linen or something dark, gray, something like that. Um, yeah, so I would make it again, but without the pocket, even though I love the pocket. The only two, uh, except for mirroring everything, the only two changes I made was I made the pocket, the back pocket. Let me just show you. So the back pocket is quite big. Um, I'm showing my bum a lot on this episode, but that's how it is. And uh, I actually added, I think, a centimeter to the to the width because the pocket they, on the pattern, maybe you can actually see it here on the pattern piece, there, it is very narrow, long and narrow. And I think maybe they were inspired to make it like a phone, the size or the the shape of a phone so it fits a, fun, a smartphone in your pocket but I didn't like the look of it I thought it looked a little too narrow so I added a little bit and I love I really like how it looks and by the way did you see the little details like a little square that you do and I just like it very much um, and I also added cuffs let's see if I can <laughs> I don't know how to do this okay so I added a cuff. Let me show you the other one, actually. <sighs> wow, this is like new kind of podcasting. I added a cuff in the end because I, I searched everything with white thread. And afterwards, I, I thought they looked really nice rolled up. But then you could see all the white um, thread, this, this ser searched, anyways, the finished edges. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of shape. It's like when I was pregnant and all the time out of breath. Um, yeah, so I didn't like how that looks. So I actually took a whole new piece of fabric uh, and attached it to the bottom and did like a... Let me show you. So I, I attached the new piece on the bottom, searched everything and wrapped it up that way. It looks nicer. Um, yeah. So that was just a little finish I did, but that was mainly because I didn't like the thread I used in, on the inside. So that's it. I think that's everything, but I would highly recommend this pattern. I think it's a such a fun pattern to do. And if you want to try to do pants, but you don't like the idea of doing a zipper or something very con fitted, because the beautiful thing about this pattern is the back is fitted but the front is really big, so you have a little bit of, plus if you eat a little bit extra, which I really like having, I mean, I'm a, I eat a lot. <laughs> and so if you eat a big meal, you can just loosen them a bit, or yeah, in the morning when you're a little more empty in the stomach, you can tighten them. And they look good on so many sizes. I think they have a really wide, wide range of sizes. Does it say here? Yeah, they're up to a 58, it's a size 58. The only thing I would say is about the, um, the sizing. I think it's because it's a French uh, pattern. I know French sizes are smaller than the normal European sizes or the normal, but the, what you generally will find. And normally I would say for pants, I would be around a 38. It's not really important the number where I am, but that's what I would expect uh, from my general size of pants. And I had to make a 40. Which is really not a problem and let me just see one thing yeah they also have a 38 39 and 40 so it was would be two sizes bigger but i just went with the measurements and the measurements put me at a 40 so that was fine um but i will say don't look at the measurements because the sizes are quite small from what i think they they, they look small um but they, it, the pants have a lot of ease in the legs so that's not an issue but on the waist you don't want it to be yeah out of portions um so just keep that in mind especially if you are not from france and you're used to sizes being bigger just 
taking measurements. <laughs> I mean, I would always say that, but sometimes you just think, oh, I know what size I am. But yeah, they even though they have a lot of, you can adjust them. It's nice to have them in the right size, I think. But sizing otherwise was perfect. I feel I feel like they fit me perfectly. So I don't care what is the number. It's just it can be confusing if you think you're doing the number that you're used to. So I've been talking and talking and talking. And I have to go and pick up the kids very soon. I um, think I will put a few clips of how the spring have looked like. Um, probably I did that in the beginning. I always do that. Um, and I will. I hopefully can make a little vlog showing you a bit more what it's been so beautiful this spring. I hope you're all well. And I hope that you manage to get some knitting time. If you have kids or just have to work a lot, then... I really hope you manage and if you um, yeah if you are a, a person without any commitments let's say use this time well oh I cannot help thinking how if I was still a student without kids all the things I could do I mean with all this time and I know I didn't do that I, oh, I it's so funny how when you once you have kids or you know once you are in a place in your life where you don't have that much free time you think why didn't I use my free time better when I was younger and I just say if you're younger or you have not many things taking your time or yeah just use the time for something beautiful learn a craft uh, make beautiful things go for a walk like I really I would love to go for a big hike somewhere um, like in the mountains or something but those things are really hard to do with kids not impossible but they're harder so if you can if you can go out and if you can just use this time that is can be very special uh, very carefully and if you cannot then i hope you you are safe and happy at home as happy as can be um i hope to talk to you all soon take care bye